Seppe van den Broeke received a master's degree, magna cum laude, in business economics, option information systems engineering from KU Leuven in Belgium. Currently, he is working as a PhD researcher at the Department of Decision Sciences and Information Management at KU Leuven and is also part of the Data Mining Apps Group. His research interests include process mining, business process management, and data mining. In his video session, entitled Business Process Analytics, Seppa will talk about how current research endeavors are allowing practitioners to go further than simple KPI-based business intelligence and reach continuous business process optimization by means of novel disciplines such as process mining and predictive analytics. Hi, my name is Seppa van den Broeke. I'm a PhD researcher at the University of Leuven in Belgium working for Professor Bart Basis in the Department of Decision Sciences. Today I will be talking about business process analytics in practice. A little word about me. Um, as I said before, working as a PhD researcher at KU Leuven, working together with Dr. Bart Basis, together in the dataminingapps.com group. My research interests encompass process mining, conformance analysis, sequence analysis, and many other topics. You can reach me at subvanenbroeke at keoleuven.be. The outline for today is as follows. I'll start with a general introduction, explaining shortly what we understand with business processes and with business process management. Then we'll dive in some common business process analytics techniques. The goal of today is to provide you with an overview of the state of art in the field and also with some topics related to our research in our day-to-day -day activities. This means that we will look at process intelligence, followed by process mining, and then we'll go a step further and we'll combine data mining and process analytics. And then I'll finish with some general conclusions. So first, the introduction. What do, we what do we understand with a business process? Well, put very simply, a business process is just a collection of interrelated activities or tasks, which are being executed in a business environment. They're executed to reach a particular goal, and this goal can be the delivery of a product, producing a product, or just reaching an outcome of a certain service. The goal of any good process in practice is to enable a swift delegation for work, which is an objective managers want to accomplish, also to provide clear and understandable guidelines to employees, and finally, clients expect efficiency and quality results. Business processes are commonly visualized or modeled um, with a plethora of um, different modeling techniques. On this slide, you can see a few of them. Common examples are BPMN, PetriNets, EPCs, and many others. Many, many process-aware information systems already have some form of modeling, designing, and planning business processes. So then what is business process management? Well, very simply, BPM, or business process management, is a field which concerns itself with aligning the organizational business processes with the concerns of every involved stakeholder. And these stakeholders, this means the process owners, the management, the executives of the company, your clients, your customers, also your employees, etc., etc. BPM is many uh, times mentioned in the same breath as business process optimization, although this is not completely true. Because BPM, as you can see here in the so-called BPM lifecycle, actually encompasses all tasks related to the management of processes. And this means the design and analysis, the planning of your process, the creation of the process, then the actual modeling using one of these visualization techniques I've shown earlier. The next, the configuration and the implementation, which information systems, which support systems will enable the actual enactment and execution of this process. This then leads us to the following step. The process is running, it's being executed to support day-to-day -day activities. Then, as these processes are running, we also want to monitor them, to make sure they behave as expected, to make sure that no deviations occur. And then finally, you also want to make sure that you're continuously optimizing and evaluating the results of your business processes. In this presentation, the goal is to provide an overview of the state of art what's called business process analytics. Many times it is regarded as 
being placed in the evaluation step of the BPM lifecycle. Although this is not completely right, what about monitoring? What about optimization? And even what about design? Can analytics also help to improve these steps in the life cycle? So what we are going to try to do is highlight shortly and briefly some novel analytical techniques we are working on to help close the loop, let's say. Meaning to also support the design, the modeling, the monitoring, and the execution of business activities. So not only regarding evaluation as some after step after you've implemented the process, but also while it is running and also to drive the design of new processes or of impro improved processes. This brings us to the following topic, namely the one of process intelligence. What is process intelligence? Well, it's hard to put one description um, on this subject. Basically, it has evolved into a very broad term, meaning Nowadays, it's just any tool that provides information to support decision-making related to any kind of business activity or business process. So that means that in the field, we see many tools and vendors offering, for example, process-aware query tools or many visualization techniques, also providing reporting tools, OLAP systems, KPI dashboards, and also often, often providing a plethora of three-letter jargon like BAM, Business Activity Monitoring, which enables to follow your process in real time, and also CPM, Corporate Performance Management. Here you can see some examples of what vendors are offering today. So you can see many of them look alike. You have some general scorecard, dashboard, showing some KPIs, showing some charts, sometimes using data warehousing tools to build reports every night, every week, every month, or also sometimes providing real-time information. Now, this is all well and good, but this is mainly for operational reporting. For example, which issues do we actually have to look for? These tools all suppose or assume that you already know which reports you want to provide to management or to stakeholders. What if you're not sure what you should look for? Also, let's say you see an issue, as you can see on the slide here. Some contracts are failed to being signed, for example. Well, you can spot the issue easily using these tools, but then if you want to uncover what the root causes are, you have to go back all the way to the raw data to find out how and why mistakes were made. And then what about the unknown unknowns, the hidden patterns? Maybe patterns underlying in the data which can help improve your processes or can help spot unknown mistakes. This is related to the last question. Can we find patterns we didn't know about before to improve our day-to-day -day activities? So these process intelligence tools are a good way to give some initial insight in how your processes are being executed, but it's possible to go further than this as well. This leads us to the research area of process mining. So what is process mining? Well, put very shortly, it's knowledge discovery from event logs. It's a research field which has sprung up around 2004 uh, and has become very popular and is positioning itself now between BPM, business process management on one side, and traditional data mining on the other side. Also, it tries to deal with the gap which is observed between the design business processes, we call the first step in the life cycle of BPM, and the actual reality. Oftentimes, we see that implementation errors occur, or shortcuts are taken to implement a design business process, or people are uncovering new, better ways um, to work around tasks, so that there exists a gap between the to-be situation and the as-is situation, which we want to uncover as well. Put simply, processes are often more complex in real life than when they were designed. Also, process mining then tries to offer a family of analysis techniques to extract knowledge from event logs. What are these event logs? We'll see it in a minute. These are just recorded sources of information by process aware information systems. So the event log is a starting point of analysis in every process mining task. So a little bit more about this event log. What is this? Well, put simply, it's just a collection of business events. They can include thousands to millions of events, uh, which means that the topic of big data is important in the realm of process mining as well. And it is impossible to analyze or monitor them manually. Here you can see an example of a very simple event log. At the basis, an event log should contain a case ID, meaning an identifier which shows which activities belong together, 
or were executed in the same process instance. Then the activity name shows the actual activity which has been executed. The event type, here all activities were completed at a certain timestamp, the last column. But you can also include more event types, like when was the activity started, when was it cancelled, when was it completed, when was it restarted, examples like these. And the originator means the employee or the person who actually executed this task. Also note that there is a column extra data. This is just to indicate that event logs are oftentimes not as simple as this. This is just the basic information required to get started. Many times you can have extra data which describes characteristics of the process, characteristics of the department working on the process, of involved products, and many other things like this. So once you have an event log ready to analyze, what are the different perspectives we can look at? Well, commonly known ones or mentioned ones are the following three. First, the process perspective. This looks at the control flow of activities, meaning the sequences of activities, the choice points, the concurrency in your process models. This allows us to answer questions such as, very simply, what is our process? Maybe we think we know how it looks like, but the actual process in real life can look differently. Can we improve the flow of activities? Where are the bottlenecks? Where is work being halted? Questions such as these. Then the next perspective is the organizational perspective, meaning the focus is put on people. Who is working together? Which departments handle specific tasks? Which departments are more specialized in dealing with specific tasks? Ans questions such as these are answered in this perspective. And then finally, the case perspective basically encompasses anything else, meaning this extra data column, which was shown earlier, the case perspective looks at this extra data and tries to find correlations between this data and many other types of performance and other indicators. Then the actual tasks we can execute, there are many tasks which process mining describes and deals with. Two of them um, have gained in popularity during the past few years, and they are called process discovery and conformance checking, or also conformance analysis. The first one, as I said, is process discovery. This is just the extraction of a process model in any form possible, BPMN, PetriNet, EPC, or SAP models, from the data as it was logged in event logs, possibly by combining multiple sources of event logs together and using them in a process discovery analysis task. So as shown here visually, you start from a database using recorded events, and from that we try to extract a model. Here you can see another example. On the left side we have our event log, and from that we just extract some form of model. This is still very descriptive. However, it's possible to annotate these discovered models with extra information, showing how much time tasks took, which people worked on the tasks, the frequency of flows and activities, to highlight bottlenecks, to highlight the common flows of behavior, and to easily spot as well main behavior as well as deviating behavior. And based on this, you can already go back to the design phase and perhaps make some changes in the implementation or in the prescri prescribed process model. Here you can see some other examples showing how the other perspectives come into play when performing a process discovery task. First of all, when focusing on the control flow, we just wonder how is the work organized. But we can also focus on the social perspective, wondering who works together, who is passing tasks to other departments or to other people. And then finally, using the case perspective, we can try to find a relation between throughput time, for example, and other data attributes. The next common process mining task is called conformance checking. And here, this is a technique that takes an existing process model, it can be a designed one or it can be a discovered one, and compares this with an event log of the same process. Shouldn't necessarily be the same exact event log, can be a newer one, for example, to check if your process is still up to date with reality. So shown schematically here, on the left side we have our existing model. On the right side we extract a new model from our database using, for example, a newer event log. And then we can compare both to see which changes have occurred, where reality has changed. So this allows us to answer some questions such as where are the deviations? 
know that this goes further than just saying that there is a problem, but this allows also much easier to answer the question, why have these problems occurred? What are the root causes? Here you can see an example of one tool showing visually, highlighting which parts in the process are failing. Meaning, which tasks are most frequently missed, skipped, violated, which routes are avoided through the process, meaning perhaps that the process is due for an update. Also, these techniques of conformance checking allow for real-time monitoring. Many of these techniques are applied as an after step using recorded data, but it's also possible to implement them in a real-time manner in running information systems. Here you can see another example of conformance checking. At the bottom we have a process instance, meaning just a sequence of activities as they were executed and stored in audit logs or in event logs. Then we try to replay, as it's called, the sequence of activities through our process model. Here you can see that the first two, claim intake and review policy, they're shown in green and checkmarked, they executed correctly. Then next, we see that proposed settlement, followed after evaluate claim, has not been executed correctly. Why? Because evaluate claim was missing in the actual trace, meaning it was expected to be executed because, as can be seen from the model, it's a necessary step, but as it was not executed, the next activity, proposed settlement, fails to execute correctly. Mistakes such as these can be easily spotted, and also you can see that the root cause behind it can also easily be determined here, meaning one activity was not executed, but actually should have been executed. The next three activities can be executed correctly again, However, they were marked as being dubious because they follow a violation. These are just some of common process mining tasks we are working on and spending research time on um, here at our university. There are many other additional tasks in the area of process mining. To give a few examples, one is rule-based property verification. and This is mainly used for compliance analysis, meaning do our processes adhere to compliance guidelines, to law, to legislation, then it's also possible to combine process mining with social analytics by extracting a social graph, for example, of people working together in a process. And it's also possible to combine process discovery with simulation techniques to quickly iterate on what-if scenarios. What if we make a change in our process to remove a bottleneck? Where will the bottleneck shift to, for example? Then next, as a final step, I want to show you how it's possible to combine process mining techniques which mainly focus on event-related data, with traditional data mining and predictive analytic techniques, which mainly focus on tabular flat data. To enable true business process analytics, we need to combine both process intelligence for the KPIs, the dashboards, the scorecards, with process mining, as we have seen, but also with predictive data mining techniques. Here I will show one example, which we call untangling a spaghetti model. Let's say you start from a very complex environment. People have much flexibility in how they try to finish their work or to accomplish a certain goal. When you try to extract a process model using process discovery techniques, the result will look like this, maybe even much, much worse, meaning it's a spaghetti model where basically each sequence of activities is permitted. Clearly, this is not very understandable um, by practitioners or by end users. So then what we do as a first step we're going to cluster the log into smaller sub-logs. This is based on common flows of behavior. So here it becomes possible to extract, for example, three clusters with simple high-frequent behavior. And then in the final cluster, we put all the very rare, exceptional, deviating behavior. This is called our REST cluster. Then what we can do is we can build a predictive decision tree using the cluster characteristics. For example, we derive a set of features from each cluster telling us something about the mean completion time, the amount of workers involved, the departments involved, the products involved, the mean uh, contract uh, amount which is involved, the contract type, etc., etc., related to your specific business environment. And then from this, we extract a decision tree, trying to de determine in which cluster a specific instance will be put based on these characteristics. Again, you can see that this extra data in the process comes in handy 
because all this extra data can be used to drive the discovery of this decision tree. Then next, and now we can enable predictive analytics. When a new process instance is received, based on the characteristics of this new instance, we can try to predict in which cluster it will most likely belong. Meaning that we can try to predict the characteristics of this new instance. We can try to predict how it will behave. We can try to predict if this will be a violating or deviating case, or, it, or it, if it will be a very common one, and can thus be handled swiftly and quickly by any specific employee. Also here, for business process analytics, this was just one example. There are many additional tasks which you can perform when you combine process mining with data mining. For example, it's possible to extract the criteria that determine how a process will branch at the choice point, meaning the factors which drive the decision to execute one activity or another one. It's also possible to combine process instance clustering, as we have seen just now, with text mining, for example. If your extra data contains text fields, then the combination of text mining with a technique as we've seen just now can be very fruitful. Also, as I've also mentioned before, it's possible to implement a real-time conformance analysis system. This can just indicate or signpost violations or problems as they occur. This can also be used in executional systems, for example, to suggest an optimal route for a process to follow during its execution. Meaning that depending on all the historical cases we've seen before, we can now advise and predict the best choices to make for new processes. And then finally, using similar techniques in the same manner, we can also advise optimal workers, optimal departments, optimal people to execute a certain task. This leads me to my conclusions. We have, I've given a quick overview of the state of arts in business process analytics by combining both process intelligence and process mining, but also by combining this with data mining and predictive analytics. And the goal behind all this, the goal behind this research, is to help practitioners to close the loop. Not only meaning close the loop in the set of techniques which is being applied, but also to close the loop in the BPM lifecycle as we've seen it before. To not only perform analytical tasks in the final phase of a process management, meaning the evaluation, but also during the design, during the monitoring, during the implementation, and during the execution. And this enables true process analysis. And this also enables practitioners to implement process optimization as an ongoing effort, rather than having to rely on time-consuming and maybe even um, untimely reporting cycles um, derived from data warehouses, then being aggregated, then being stored in an OLAP cube, and then finally giving some reports. If you want more information about this, you can reach us at the following websites. Uh, mainly dataminingapps.com or you can also contact us directly using our emails portbaas.keuleuven.be or me, seppe van den broeke.keuleuven.be